My name is Jonas Bukhoshi. I am the country manager for EMC, responsible for the SADC region. So we are a sponsor to the MWAT event. We have uh, our executive coming from the US, who is a keynote speaker. And we also have uh, a demonstration of some of our products at the event. But this week is quite a busy week for us. We have uh, um, a number of events. One of them is we just finished a breakfast for CIOs around the country. We call it CIO Connect. We also had uh, our um, executive briefing center where we take individual customers through our strategy and our products. And lastly, we had uh, the EMC exchange, which is where we share with a broader audience who we are, what we do, and how we can add value to their business. So technology has changed the way businesses are run. And there are a number of things that uh, companies must take into account, whether they are small, big, or medium size. And fundamentally, there are four forces that are driving change from the IT point of view. The first one is social media, where the adoption is uh, creating um, huge impact on people and, and companies. Number two, it is uh, uh, mo mobility. The good thing about mobility is that people can have access to reach applications that uh, can enhance the way they deal with organizations. Number three, it is cloud, the agile platform upon which all these applications can be run. And lastly, it's big data. Around the world, data is exploding. If you look at between now and 2020, we're going to produce five times the data that we are producing today in five years' time. And what companies need to do is to have a way to lean into that data, to understand customers, and be able to be intimate with them to provide them personalized services. So what are the pillars that uh, the new digital era stands on? We, we had a survey with about 600 odd CXOs around the world. And the purpose of that uh, survey was to understand from them what, what they believe are the attributes that will enable an organization to perform in the digital era. And here are the things that they mentioned. The first one, they believe that the organization that must succeed in the digital era must proactively identify opportunities. The second one is that organization must be able to operate in near real time. Number three, that organization must be able to provide personalized services. Number four, they must demonstrate that uh, um, they are operating in an environment that takes care of the security of the, of, the, uh, of the people. And lastly, they also wanted to make sure that uh, that organization is able to um, innovate in a more agile way. Those are the five attributes that uh, the, the CXOs mentioned. Just to give you a typical example of how this works, um, if you look at the BMW, they launched a new 7 Series. That new 7 Series, on a daily basis, it creates over 50 meg of data those 50 meg of data is shared with BMW. You as a driver allows BMW to share, to have that data. It will help them to service you better. It will help them to proactively identify where the, where the challenges are with the car. But you trust them that this data will not be used in a bad way. And that's the demonstration of what these five attributes mean for somebody to be able to operate in a digital world. So um, this digital transformation is changing the way businesses are run. And the question is, um, um, what kind of jobs will become obsolete because of uh, um, this digital transformation? And what are the key jobs that will be created or new, uh, key new jobs or new professions that will be created in this new era? I mentioned before that uh, our part of the survey is that a number of CXOs believe that uh, for an organization to be successful, it must predictively identify opportunities. The funny thing is that 62% of them believe that's what they require for them to succeed. But when you ask them what is the capability today for them to do that, 
only 12% of them believe they're capable to do that. So there's a gap between what uh, they know is required for them to succeed and the capability that they have today. One of the jobs that will be fundamentally important going forward is one called data scientist. This is for somebody to identify the, the trend in the data that's being collected, to look at the trend, to look at the correlation, and to identify opportunities that these companies can work on. So while there are a number of, of jobs that will be created, I think the one that stands out more amongst above the rest is the one of data scientists because that will give organizations a new lease of life. So the question that you may ask is, uh, um, is it true that uh, um, these new people, that is uh, um, the information generation, are they looking for personalized service? And if so, what tools do we have for us to do that? The answer is absolutely correct. The new generation is looking for personalized services because they get used to that. They get used to that on the internet, when they buy things online, and it's affecting even large organizations. I can quote somebody that I have not got permission to quote, but it was interesting when uh, Woolworths re released their results in August of this year, that the CIO said, of the eight points that will be focus areas going forward, one of the most important ones is for them to create multi-channel. And what multi-channel is, is the way for them to be able to deal with their clients, whether they come through the doors, whether they phone, whether they go on the website, whether they use any social media to interact with the organization. In his mind, and I quote him, the biggest transformation that a retailer will undergo in the next coming two to five years is digital transformation. So large companies realize that for them to, to attract retained clients is for them to be able to provide this uh, um, uh, personalized service. You can imagine, um, typically in the, in the retail environment, if the, the, if the companies were able to, uh, to be able to deliver what is called pro proximity marketing. What that is, is for a retailer to know when you are coming into the mall, to know who you are, what you bought from them, why you did like it, and also to give you an idea of what they can match for what you bought and give you alone a special price for that item. That's a kind of a intimacy or, 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 or specialized relationship that they want to have with you as a customer. So the tools to use that are enormous. I think the basis of that though is big data. It's for the companies to be able to collect data on you and be able to analyze it and ask, again as I said to find correlations so that they can provide you a personalized service. So many people say that in this new dig digital era uh, information is the key asset second only to um, the employees or professionals of the organization. The question is uh, are companies aware of that and are they using it as such? The answer is it varies. There are some companies that are aware of this and they are fully utilizing the data or the information that they have, but many, many, many are not. So what we see happening around the world is that many companies, what they have done so far is uh, um, to collect a lot of data and most of them will have uh, um, islands of data in their organizations and therefore it is very difficult for them to have the information that can be seen as, a, as, a, as an asset. What we are proposing to customers is for them to create what we call a data lake. And data lake is beyond, so what you have to do is to collect data and put it in one place irrespective of, of who it belongs to, whether it's for sales, for HR, for marketing, for manufacturing, or just information coming from social media. To be able to take that data, put it in one data lake, and be able to analyze it. Today, many people are not seeing the value of that information because they are not able to analyze it in totality. But there are some organizations across the world who are finding this to be the real thing. As a matter of fact, some of them are creating business models around collecting data and selling it to customers so that they can create it as an, as an asset for many companies. But we are still behind in terms of uh, uh, looking at physical assets and using information and being able to look at it too as real assets for the organization. So we are, we are delighted to be part of the, uh, the MWOT event, the MWOT My World of Tomorrow, because 
fundamentally, what the event is doing is to highlight the importance of the digital revolution. This revolution is real. It's affecting companies across the world and here in South Africa. And basically what it means is if you don't adapt, you die. As it is today, if we are to look at the number of companies that were part of Fortune 500 in, in the year 2000 and compared to today, more than half of those have disappeared because they were unable to adapt. We'll be part of this uh, event. We've got a keynote speaker. We'll be talking about the impact of this digital revolution. We also will be demonstrating some of our solutions. And the key one, we'll be demonstrating uh, an e-clinics solution that we believe we can take across, across the country together with uh, BCX. My name is Jonas Pekoshi. I am the country manager for EMC in the SADC region. Thank you.